Hi everybody, Jay the Fish Guy. Today we are on location at the Squam Lake Science Center. They have a very large uh, freshwater uh, native species tank, so native to New Hampshire fish. Uh, and they're getting a filter upgrade today. There was another company that did the initial tank build and install. It was actually a tank manufacturing company that came and did it. And they'll remain nameless. Uh, <laughs> wasn't a big fan of their, uh, their work and what they picked for filtration. And now it's been two years. Uh, I've been under contract for almost those two years to help maintain it and take care of it. And I've suggested it's time for an upgrade. So how big is big? Pretty big. It's a 1,400 gallon tank. So I'm gonna spin the camera around and kind of give you a quick tour. So here it is. 1,400 gallons freshwater tank, native species to New Hampshire. So we have things like sunfish or bluegills or whatever you want to call them. Uh, perch. Got some smallmouth bass. Just. Uh, this is a very impressive looking tank, size-wise. Uh, all the kids love it when they come in to check things out. Uh, the issues that we've been struggling with a little bit have been mostly due to lack of flow. Uh, they put on two of the biggest Eheim canisters and they just weren't big enough. There's a sump back there and I'll, I'll show you that part too. Uh, there's a sump and it's got two Eheim pumps on it, but for this volume of tank, it's just, it's not enough. So you get detritus built up, you get waste, and that leads to algae issues. More prevalent in the uh, summer months when the Science Center is open, but still, still a concern even this time of year. Uh, when they're closed, we don't do major, major scrubbing or algae cleaning, just choosing to kind of leave it in there and uh, let the fish do their thing. Uh, there is a three-dimensional background on the back of the tank, kind of hard to see with the lighting. The, the camera's not really picking it up all that well, but it's a, it's a cool touch. For lighting, they have three of the uh, Aqua Illumination Hydra 52s. And they actually do a great job of keeping this tank lit and looking bright. Alright, so here we are behind the scenes. This is the back of the tank. There's a, a ladder that goes up to this catwalk, which I have just simply out of the way while I'm working. These are the canister filters. And a large Eheim canister there. I forget the exact number, but it pushes somewhere in the neighborhood of like 900 gallons per hour, I think. A uh, large sump with bio balls. This is a 125 gallon tank, by the way, just to give you an idea of the just sheer scale of this tank. Uh, a couple of Eheim pumps, and then another Eheim canister filter here that's plumbed in line with a UV sterilizer. So what are we swapping it out to? We are going to do a large external pump hooked up to this large cartridge filter here. Uh, specifically, it's the 100 square foot model, I believe. It's a pleated cartridge. Uh, usually they talk about them for like pools and spas and such, but we, we really want them uh, on a tank this size. Just gotta have that larger volume, can push more water through it. Uh, and that's hopefully gonna fix a lot of our uh, fundamental issues that we're having here. Uh, the flow is going to be kicked up probably four times what we have right now. Um, so yeah, there's a, a quick rundown of what the plan is and uh, I'll show you a video of everything when we're all said and done. Alright, to give you guys a little sense of scale, this is a gallon jug and this is the pleated cartridge. Let me actually take a step back here. So you can see how big that is. This one happens to be the 100 square foot version. Uh, you can see how many individual pleats there are. This has some serious capacity for mechanical filtration, and that's what we want. We want to collect all the bits and pieces floating around to, to make this tank a little more crystal clear. So that's, that's the scale we're working with on this tank. All right, so here we have uh, most of the parts and pieces I'm going to use to make all of this happen today. Uh, lots of PVC converters and going from hard line to soft line, elbows, ball valves, uh, barbed fittings, all that good stuff. Plenty of hose clamps, uh, a screwdriver with the, the hex end so it's uh, easy to take those hose clamps on and off. 
pair of pliers. These are a great find. I found these uh, at Lowe's. They work awesome for cutting vinyl tubing. Uh, just make it quick and easy and safe. Some PVC cutters. These are a jumbo size that I can actually do larger diameter pipe if I need to. Those little small ones really don't work on anything past you know inch and a quarter. Those I can do inch and a half safely uh, without uh, snapping anything. Uh, this is a new uh, one-step PVC cement. Uh, I've tried it on a few applications. I've actually been very pleased with it. You know, anybody that's done PVC work knows. You know, you got to do the cleaner, then you have to do the PVC glue. Uh, nothing irritates me more when I see people using the purple primer. Yes, it's great to see where you've used it, but when you look at people's setups and all you see is purple at every single joint, uh, it, it just looks ugly. Uh, so this takes it even one step further. So instead of having to have the glue and what I use is the clear cleaner, comes in a yellow can, this is just one step. It cleans and glues all in one. Uh, nice and neat, uh, you know, you don't have purple stuff everywhere, it's great. This, this is a, a pipe thread compound, so instead of Teflon tape, I use this stuff. Um, perfectly safe, you know, don't use too much of it, you know, try to wipe off any of the excess, but you get a much better seal the first time. You know, if you've used Teflon tape before and, you know, you're, you're trying to do these threads, like say it's going to go onto the, the pump right there, uh, you use Teflon tape on the, the threads there. It'll weep, you know, you never know if you have quite enough or they tell you don't do too much because then you might start cracking things. So that, that's a, a, a great tip there to use that. Uh, it's obviously been in my box for a while. This was Rector Seal, uh, pipe thread sealant, uh, and I think that was PTFE enriched. Uh, it just, I, I just grabbed it off the shelf after doing a little bit of research and uh, it, it's been working out great for me. Uh, definitely a uh, a top tip there, so. Okay, so here's just a quick look at how much of that pipe thread compound. You can see the bare one there. And it's, it's just enough to really fill the threads, you know, nothing too major. And once you screw it on, there'll be some, some excess coming out the bottom. And you just take a, take a towel and wipe that up. Uh, this particular version is the non-hardening so it's going to stay pliable so you can actually take the fitting off eventually it doesn't compromise the ability to hold back water uh, it just makes it so you can take the take the piece back apart again which I find in the long run is is typically very very useful all right so we've got the first pump all plumbed up ready to go uh, you can see we're kind of doing a mix of hard line and soft line. The idea behind that is we're kind of pressed for space in this application because uh, you know, just the way the stand is designed, the way the manufacturer put everything in initially, uh, and the fact that all this is also usable space by the animal care folks, um, I kind of have to tuck everything in in kind of some weird places. So the soft line allows me a little more flexibility to do that. All right guys, so we have the pump all plumbed up. We have the cartridge filter all plumbed up. Uh, I know it looks like there's a whole lot of 90s on here. Uh, it's just, it, it's what we had to do to make everything fit in the space that we had. And with this big honking pump, it's pressure rated. Uh, I forget the exact specs on it, but at the time when I was researching, this is more than enough to compensate for the uh, twists and elbows that I had to put in here. So now I have this other line here that they did not put a ball valve on to go to that part of it. That was built into the filter. There's another ball valve there which goes, you can actually drain the tank down into this drain and that's how you do your water changes. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to clamp off the line here to be able to put a ball valve in in line before the pump so we can turn the ball valve off and actually pull everything out if we need to. This is the, the return line here, which has a ball valve that we have shut off. This is less than ideal. I'm actually gonna have to come back around and go back to the cartridge filter. Again, that's just how these folks did it. My only alternative, 
would be to actually loosen the bulkhead and spin the whole assembly, but we're not going to do that with a completely full 1400 gallon tank. Uh, and I'm fairly certain they actually silicone the bulkheads in place as well. So it's, it's a kind of a no-win situation. I'm just going to have to deal with another, another elbow in play here uh, to make it all come back around. So that's where we're at. Hey guys, just a quick tech tip for the day. Um, when you're putting together vinyl tubing onto barbed fittings, sometimes it can be extremely stubborn to get them to seat all the way properly. Especially if you're in a tight area and you don't have the luxury of doing it outside of the sump area or inside your cabinet. Um, a little bit tip to help get that on there a little bit better, especially if the tubing is a bit cold. Uh, take yourself a glass of water, warm it up in the microwave till not quite boiling but close to it so it's uncomfortable if you're sticking your finger in basically. Uh, dip the end of it that's going to be going on to the barb, the vinyl tubing. Dip the end of it into the hot water, 15-30 seconds maybe, and then go push it on and it zips right on, no issues at all. So if you're dealing with some stubborn vinyl tubing, that's a, a great tip to, to help make life a little bit easier for all you. All right, here we have it, all finished, all plumbed. So you got your cartridge filter here. Water comes in through that. We have the ball valve so we can shut things off so we can change the cartridge. Goes through our pump, up out of the pump, had to do this little kick up over the bar here for the, the stand. A little inconvenience, but not the end of the world. Uh, and then it goes back out of the cartridge. Had to do our little, little 90 here to help make that corner a little more soft and gentle. Because again, we just can't, can't spin that without risking uh, a whole lot of trouble. And then a ball valve that's already in place. So we shut off those two ball valves and uh, relieve the pressure and uh, we can change the cartridge nice and simple without water going everywhere. All right guys, so we got the second one all installed. Plumbed in line. Ball valves so we can shut everything off and change the cartridge. So what I'm gonna do with one of the other canister filters that came off of it, I'm actually gonna plumb it to this sump so we can still run our UV sterilizer. It's gonna be a place for us to run carbon, some extra biomedia just because. And I'm just gonna to have to build an intake strainer and an output uh, tube and all that good stuff because it just didn't have it with it. So uh, I'll show you that when I'm all done. So here's the output uh, of the canister filter. This is the old one. So this is the Eheim and the level of water flow that you're getting out of it. Again, they say 900 gallons per hour, but by the time the media start getting, you know, filled with debris and all your tubing and everything, you're definitely not getting 900 gallons per hour. So again, this and is the here we have after, and you can see just how much more flow is coming out of the end of the single output here. Just so, so much more flow, and that's that's what we're shooting for. We're, we're trying to get more circulation in the tank. You can see all the stuff that's already been kicked up just by turning it back on uh, with the extra flow. It's just, it's kicking stuff up out of the rocks and off the bottom, and that way it's able to be taken out by the filtration as opposed to just sitting in the tank and rotting and, you know, leading to more algae issues. Okay, so putting the canister filter back on, there was a little bit of a hiccup. So with it being on the ground next to the sump right on floor level and the water level not really being high enough it kind of hit me that it, it would have a problem self-priming and getting going again every time you service the filter so how we're addressing this okay so normally the pump sits on top it's actually pretty high you know see where it is compared to the top of the sump level there and that that's where the issue is going to come into play so what i've done is actually pulled the pump off, managed to find a fitting that's the correct size because of course Eheim being German, everything's metric. So managed to find that and then the pump's actually gonna be inside the sump and we'll feed it as opposed to having to pull water 
uh, up through an intake and then back out again. So then, so water will go up, be pushed through, up through into the canister filter, back out the top, and then into that nozzle there. So I'm still saving all the quick disconnects so I can pull the canister, make it easy to maintain, because that is critical, uh, easy maintenance. And uh, everything should be spot on. So I'll uh, show you when I'm all said and done. All right, guys, everything is hooked up, flowing, no leaks, UV sterilizer is on. Just have to button up a few things, make things a little prettier, and uh, we're done for the day. All right, everybody, we are done for the day. The filtration is in, there's no leaks. Tank's a little hazy, only because we're actually stirring up a lot more stuff uh, that was hidden under the rocks. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for sticking with us. I know this one was a little bit of a long one, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and uh, more to come. Thanks a lot, guys. Catch you later.